Hey guys. So I thought today we would uh, maybe play with some GPS. So, welcome to Surveying with Robert. So, um, let's see here. Ah, free for coffee. It's cappuccino this morning. Made it with my Bravo this morning. I'm getting good at it too, let me tell you. Okay, so today we're gonna hook up a TSC-5 data collector and we're going to hook it up to the um, R12, and I'm going to show you guys how to do static. Um, that's not a TSC-5 data collector. We're, today we're going to do, <laughs> we're going to use a TSC-5 data collector, and we're going to connect up to the R12 base, R12 rover. I'm going to show you how to set the survey style up. We're going to log static data. Now, the cool thing about logging the static data is, gosh, dang, is it bright out here this morning. Um, the cool thing about the logging the static data is I logged the static data last night. So, um, so this is kind of like a cooking show, right? So what I've done is I have uh, baked the cake and I've already got it done, and but I'm gonna put it in the oven and show you how to put it in the oven, right? So basically I'm gonna show you guys how to start logging static but I've already logged static, I let log all night last night so that we could process it today so I could show you guys how all this stuff works. So, hmm, let's go see what we can get done. Okay, so, I can't do this and hold my coffee. Okay, so, <clears throat> TSC-5, let's, uh, See if we can't get this thing in there. I've already got both receivers turned on. Let's plumb this up a little bit so I'm not looking at it crazy here. Turn it more so you guys can see me a little bit better. Okay, so let's go into Trimble Access. Oh, I'm not sure which version. I am running the latest version, 2023.01. Open. I'm going to say, I'm going to delete that project from yesterday. Okay, so now I'm gonna open that project and I'm gonna say new. Something about TSC-5 sometimes, it seems like there's a lag when I push a button and I'm not used to that because the TSC-7 don't do that. So, uh, whoops, you guys are gonna get mad at me if I do that. Opus. I'll just call it Opus. Okay, Mississippi East, we're all good. Enter, accept. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the settings. We're going to go to serve. Whoops. We're going to go into settings, survey styles. Okay, so we do not have one called Opus in here. So normally I call it like RTK Opus, right? It's for the um, percent of the style. That way you know. What you're doing so the here's the trick here's an easy way to do it you already have an rtk survey style right so an rtk survey style is going to be set up with your base and rover blah 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 so let's go in and let's just say copy and we'll call it rtk opus opus okay so now we have an rtk opus so let's edit that let's go down to the base options because that's what we're worried about right now okay so it copied over my rtk survey style but i'm going to show you guys if you create a new one you'd go through the, i'm going to go through this survey style but if you create a new one you'd go through basically the same steps so i'm going to say rtk and i'm going to say infill why use infill because robert said so so <laughs> so um i like using infill just simply because if i do pp post-process kinematic I use infill. If I'm using a drone, I want to use infill. So I just use infill still logging. That's just, that's why I do it. Okay, so in tenant type, we have an R12i lever extension. There's a black lever extension on there. So if you put this in the service style, you don't ever have to worry about measurements. So I have enough to worry about in the field. I want that thing 
to be the same every time I go set up, and I want this thing to be the same every time I go set up. I don't want guys out in the field that have to measure a bunch of stuff to get going. They can mismeasure whatever they want to. Don't screw up my data. Don't screw up my GPS stuff, okay? So lever extension of R10, that says, okay, the antenna height is 6.562, so that's two meters plus a lever extension. So the lever extension tells it that what the height is because it's already pre-programmed in here and everything is measured up to the phase center of the antenna. So it knows where the phase center is at by me telling it lever of R12 extension. Got it? If you're not doing that, you either need to measure to the bottom of a quick release or bottom of antenna mount. There's two different places to measure there. If I'm sending this straight off to Opus and not through the GNSS processor, then I need to go to the bottom of the antenna mount. That means you remove the quick release and you measure to the bottom of the antenna mount. Okay, so you're, you're, you gotta remember there's a quick release and antenna mount. So anyways, you guys probably already know that, right? From other videos. Okay, we're not gonna worry about serial number, station index. We'll get into that. That's a whole nother video, right? Station index. Logging device, you can do either receiver or controller. Unless you plan on leaving a data collector at the base, I would recommend that you do receiver. Okay, logging interval. Now this one's tricky. If you're flying a drone, you want a minimum of one second. I had somebody ping me on uh, YouTube and said something about they fly at half a second. Now, I don't know, that's a lot of data to process if you're running a two hour static observation. So I, I don't know that half a second is actually worth it. Manu all the manufacturers I know of say a second. So I don't know. Is it using it? Like Opus uses 30 second intervals or used to, I guess they still do. And uh, so I set it at 15. So I set it at 15 so I make sure that I get, at least get every 30 second interval, right? We don't skip anything. Okay, so speaking of which, logging interval, I'm going to say 15 second. If you're flying a drone, like I said, you may want to go one second right there. Okay, elevation mask, that is from the center of the antenna up 10 degrees. Everything above that, I'm getting satellites. We want to make sure all of our satellites are turned on. Hit accept. Rover data link, edit, receiver internal. If I wanted to connect to it, down at the bottom of the screen right now, apparently I'm connected to the rover, but if I hit base, it's gonna connect up to the base. There it comes, okay. And if I hit connect, it's gonna connect up to the radio in that base station. Okay, so there's all my information. I'm running 461-1000 like all other surveyors on the planet. That's why we walk all over each other. Trim talk version 9600. Okay, so the baud rate, and, and I'll get into the radio stuff in, in another video. I'm working on probably like the next Tuesday tip. But basically, the baud rate is how fast data is transferring from the radio from here to there, right? Uh, the amount of information that it's carrying. So, okay, so all that looks good, except now you want to make sure that the frequency for your base and your rover are the same, except. I'm gonna go up to the rover options. Rover options should be fine because I copied it from my RTK survey style, right? So if I'm already running RTK, I just copied that survey style, it should be good. CMRX, uh, instead of an R12i, we're gonna be running an R12. Bottom of quick release, that is right here. That's two meters to the bottom of that quick release, serial number, use station index, I'm saying any uh, I could say use that station index, um, prompt for station index. If you do that, it's going to pop up and say, okay, this base is broadcasting. Is it yours? I usually leave that unchecked when I'm doing this type of stuff. Uh, make sure all the satellites are turned on, even this nav C, nav IC down at the bottom. I'm going to turn off the tilt functions and I'm just, for the video purposes, I'm going to turn off the X fill too. Okay. So. Rover data link, you'd go through the same thing. I'm just gonna hit store, escape. Okay, now then, like I said, I've already done the static last night, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. So now then we're gonna go in and hit that. We're gonna go, we're gonna hit the hamburger button. We're going to hit measure, and there's our RTK opus. And we're gonna say start base. So it's gonna connect up to that. Okay, point name. So, if you have tied to the net, a network and you have set a point, RTX, whatever, and you have set a point, you have a control point, you're sitting on a monument, whatever, key that in right now, okay? So I can do that different ways. So I'm gonna say number one, I can go in, I can say 
key in, okay? So right there I can key it in if I want to, like the monument or whatever. Let's back up one. If I try right there to say enter, point name does not exist, okay? That means that I haven't keyed anything in. There is no point number one in this project. I'm gonna go back to key in. And if you'll notice down here in the lower left-hand corner of the screen, there's escape and then there's a here button. Here button gets you a autonomous position uncorrected. It, the location is no better than, than you taking your cell phone over and holding it over the top, if that makes any sense. So be careful about that. Don't think that it's gospel or anything weird like that, but you need a good here position. I have seen in the past, if you're sitting on the wrong point, you go to start your base. And if you're not careful, you start your base and you're actually on the wrong point, the, other, the, the good point's 300 foot away, it might broadcast but the rover will never pick it up. So it's, it's like it's broadcasting the wrong information for some reason, and you'll stand there and can't figure out why you're not getting radio or why it's not working, why it's not connecting, why it's not starting, and come to find out you're sitting on the wrong point. Or the GPS thinks you're on the wrong point anyways, okay? Whether that's the wrong projection or whatever. And I think we need to do a video on that. Okay, so I'm gonna hit here, and I'm gonna call it CP base. Enter, store. Now then, when I hit start, if you look on that receiver, if you're standing there looking at the face plate on the left side down at the bottom, there's an arrow. When I hit start, that arrow is going to come on. Okay, when that arrow comes on, that means you're logging static data. If you're going to do RTK and infill, make sure that that light comes on before you walk away. Otherwise, you are not recording static data at that base station. Just a good visual check start okay so now i've started my base station so it should be logging data everything should be good so now all i've got to do is go in and say measure go back to rtk opus okay so i don't know if you guys noticed or not but you have two different survey styles here so you i can use the base as one survey style and a rover is another so i could literally just jump to rtk right now if i wanted to on the rover side, if that's what I want to use, it's the same as the RTK Opus. The only difference is RTK Opus is storing static data. And I'm gonna say measure points. Okay, now I'm ready to do RTK work. So. At this point, I can do my survey. I can go and do whatever I want to do, go shoot whatever I want to shoot. I can shoot the edge of the road, I can shoot the fire hydrant, I can shoot these trees, I can shoot the road out there, I can shoot the power line, I can shoot my building, I can shoot whatever I want to, okay? So then I'm going to, when I'm done, I'm gonna say, okay, let's end my survey style. Measure, end survey style. Power down receiver. I'm gonna say no. Okay, so if I go up here to the top of the screen, you see the little icon up there at the top that looks like a GPS unit? So hit that. You can also get to this by going into, get the hamburger button, go down to instruments, say GNSS functions. Takes you to the same place. We wanna to go to base mode. So we ended the survey, and when we ended the survey, um, what we did was we ended the rover survey. The base is still going, okay? So I'm gonna say base mode, and I am going to go to, um, where's it at? There it is, end survey, boom. So now I'm going to end the base. It's gonna ask me if I wanna shut it down. I'm gonna say no, because I still wanna do something. So now what I wanna do is I wanna go in and I wanna say import files. Okay, so I've got files from 611, 612, 612. Okay, so let's look at um, 611 would have probably been last night, and then 612 obviously would be today, okay? So if we're looking at that, here's a good way to figure out which file's which. So the first four numbers is actually the last four of the receiver you log the static data in. So in my case, 0384. If we looked at the front, 
of my receiver, it says 8.4, okay? So that tells me that I recorded static data on those. Now then, the next three numbers is going to be the Julian day. So mine says um, 163, and then I've got a 163 and a 163. Okay, the reason for that is, is because the, um, the file, I let this set out here until the battery died. So I don't know how long it was, but it could have been after midnight. So it's telling me my Julian day is 163, 163. So those two were actually, if you look at the Julian day, according to the GPS clock, these were, these were actually done on the same day. So notice how one of them says zero, the other one says one. That's because one, zero is the first file, one is the second file. Make sense? So if I go down here and I look at 163 again, it's a two. So that means that it is the, if you look, zero, one, two, get it? So that's the number, that's the file in that Julian day, okay? So if we look and said, okay, uh, let's see, here's this one at 8, 8.09 p.m. We have one at 6.59 a.m. and that's our time. And here's one at 8.11.56 uh, a.m. Okay, so I'm guessing that one is the one that we need. So I'm gonna say import and I'm gonna say start. And as you can see, it's a pretty good size file. Loaded it at 15 seconds, but I don't know, it's probably at least four hours. Depends on how long that battery lasted. And I think it was a fresh battery. So, okay, so we've got this going. I'm gonna import this file. We're gonna take it into the office and uh, I'm going to pull the data off the data collector. We're gonna send it to the GNSS processor. I'm gonna show you guys how to do all that stuff. So, let me get my coffee. And as soon as that gets done, we'll go inside and see if we can't process that data. Okie doke. So, we pulled that file off, it's in the data collector. So now what we need to do, so we need to hook up the handy dandy cable. So when you plug in the USB-C cable, your data collector is automatically gonna pop up and it's gonna say, okay, well you just plugged in the USB, now what do you wanna do? I'm gonna say file transfer. I have a video on this, by the way. So, let me just lay this off to the side for now. And so what I'm going to do is we are going to go find the, let me pull this over so you can see it. So we should have, I got way too much stuff on here. Um, we should have one that says TSC5 right there, TSC5, internal storage. Okay, you'll look all this stuff you'll see Trimble data right here okay so Trimble data is where all that stuff's going to be at let's go to Trimble data okay you have common geodetic data languages projects and system files you created a project i called it field work right so you have a project we're going to open it up project field work okay if you look when i created that job i called it opus so now there is a file called opus files and you'll look, there's a job. It says Survey Pro job. That's because software I got loaded on here. It's converted anyways. I deal with Spectra and with Access all the time. Yours probably says Task Scheduler or something like that. So I've got Origin on that. Anyways, never mind. Don't pay attention to it. But anyways, it's job file. So um, if I wanted to pull off the uh the opus file then i would just go in and there is the opus file now then here's a trick as well well let's say you want to transfer your just csv points so instead of using like business center and bringing the job file over let's just assume that you want to um bring over the points so all, i think all i got in there is a base point but i'll just show you how to do it so you'll notice i'm in 
I'm in here in, in the job. So if I go, let's say that I was right here, okay? So if I was right here, this is my job. I just came in. I just remember I just transferred the data over from the data, from the uh, receiver to the data collector. So now if you hit the hamburger button and you look up at the top, you have project and you have job. So hit job. Look down here at the bottom. You got some options. One of them is going to be export. Export common delimited CSV. That's the one you want. You'll notice it's got some other stuff in there. Okay. Be careful about file name and where you, where you put this at. I've had people call me and go, oh, I can't find my file. That little folder out here on the very end, you hit that little folder and you can tell it where you want to put it. So um, it's going under projects, field work. If I put it in the Opus files, accept, which is where it should be. You were going to say accept. Now then, what do I want to send? I'm just going to send all points. You got, you got options there. If you just want to send particular points or whatever, I'm going to say all points. Transfer complete. Okay, so now then, if I go back, to the computer and I go to Opus Files. Now I've got my Opus CSV file right there. So now I could bring that in straight into Civil 3D if I wanted to. So if we wanted to copy these over somewhere, then I would just probably the best thing to do would be just to copy that right there. Um, so I'm going to say copy. And then I'm going to take it somewhere. Let's go to customer data. Let's go to NEI demo data. Um, new folder. Um, static files. I may already have one called static files. Uh, static international fee. Do, 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 do. Looks like I don't have one called static files. Static files. We're going to paste it in there. There they are. So there's both of them in there. So I'm going to slide this over to the other screen. And I'm going to open up. Whoops. I'm going to open up Google. No, thank you. So you can go to the GNSS processor. So if I go, I've got it saved in here. Under, there it is, GNSS processor. Typically, I would say. Grab that T04 file and drop it in there and let it send off to Opus. But I have a problem. When I do that, there's an error. I have no idea why. I, I haven't tried another file to see what's going on or anything. So I'll worry about it later. So let's do this. I am going to convert it to Rhinex. And I have Rhinex on my computer. You can go to Trimble's website and find Rhinex. We may look for it here in a second. I don't want to make this video like two hours long, though. Um, if I go file, open, and I go and find that file, customer data, any demo data, static, I do have a static file, I have a static file, and I have a static files, <laughs> whoops, it's under static files, okay, remind me to delete that, so there's a T04, so I'm going to bring that into, I'm, I'm working here in Rhinex, I'm going to say T04, open. Okay, it's going to scan that T04, and I'm going to say file, convert files. You'll see it convert to files. Boom, says complete. So if I close that, get out of it, I come back over to Opus files. There they are. So what I want is that file right there. The I call it the O file. It's the uh, observation file. You got, you got a navigation file and all kind of stuff in there. Okay, let's move that out of the way. Let's go back to Google. And I'm going to say NOAA-NGS. So that take you to the NGS website. When you hit the National Geodetic Survey, you're going to notice Opus Processing is right here on the front page. We're going to say yes, that's what we want to do. Okay, it says choose file, no file chosen. Let's go back up. Let's go over to customer data. Let's go to any demo data. And it's static files, Opus files. And I'm going to say observation, open. There's my file. Now it's going to ask me for my receiver. So I was using the R12. Okay, tremble, 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 R12. None, none means that there's no drawing attached. I may regret this, but let's do this. I'll go to antenna. 
I believe you go to antenna calibration, you go browse antenna information by brand and company, and you scroll down to Trimble. Crap. Let's do that again. Trimble navigation. Okay. So if I go down, well, first of all, look right here. Radome. That's what it was. There's no radome. Radome is a cover that goes over an antenna like a Zephyr Geodetic or something. They will put a radome over it. I think the NGS now recommends you don't do that. So what you're getting is, is you get the uh, antenna type. It says antenna code plus radome code with images. But you'll find, you'll see down here the Trimble, 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 Trimble. Where's the R12? Trimble R12 right there. No rail dome, no images. Hmm. So uh, they give you all this antenna that you don't even want to see that. But this is what you're looking for right here. Yes. Um, so there's the R12. Uh, come on, people. Really? Can't you see I'm doing a video? So that's the R12 right there, and that none means that there's no red dome and there's no image for that receiver to tell you what's what. Just FYI. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. And I figured that was going to happen. Nope, I still got the file. Never mind. Yep, it's still there. But I did lose this. Go back down to Trimble again. Trimble, Trimble, Trimble. Trimble R12. Okay, I'd have to look. It was like I went to the bottom of the uh, lever extension, so it's not going to give you that. I'm going to say, um, I don't I really don't care. 2.20 2 meters. I don't know. <clears throat> We're going to try it anyways and see. And we'll say, Robert. I'm not going to worry about the options. The options are like if you want an extended format, like an XML, which you can use with Business Center and stuff, or they're just, you know, things you want to choose, right? Um, different identifiers blah 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 okay so I am not going to worry about it so let's see if I can turn that back off okay so do 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 antenna two meters da, 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 da. okay so we're gonna upload this to static because I know that it's more than two hours it says two to 48 or less than so I'm just gonna say upload to static um, uh-oh, hmm, I lost my data file. Observation, open, okay, let's try that again. Do, 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 do. See, I was looking to see if I had everything. Um, upload static. Let's see what happens. There it goes. Okay, upload successfully, you receive an email with processing is complete. There you go. That is how you get it off the data collector. You do the static, you get it off the data collector, and that is how we send it to Opus. Anyways, guys, trying to keep this video from being 45 minutes long. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that helps you out. I hope you have a better understanding. I had some customers that were asking me how to do this. So I wanted to get this out for a Tuesday tip. Today is Tuesday. It is five minutes after 10. I've got to put this together, get it edited, and my goal is to have this Tuesday tip out before lunch. So we'll see what happens. I've got my phone's already rang three times. I got emails I got to take care of. So wish me luck. So God bless. Really appreciate you guys for watching. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, by the way. That helps.